to join us for Ash Wednesday. Just to give you a little bit of, this is your very first Ash Wednesday, just to give you a little bit that this is the first day of Lent, and it's the season right before as we celebrate Easter, and it leads up to Easter. Tonight we'll be applying ashes on either your forehead or your, or your hand, and the purpose is to show penance for our sins, to confront our sins, confess our sins, talk to God our Father, our Abba Father, about our sins, and ask for his forgiveness. And we just pray that this season is very set apart and special for you this year, and that uh, you consider it a very holy and spiritual season. It's such a great way to start healing for our spiritual health and uh, we hope you can join us as we do that tonight so we're glad you're here if you'll bow with me god we're just so grateful for what christ did for us it's just overwhelming when we think of the suffering that he went through and the pain that he went through the abuse that he went through and God, it was all just because he loved us. He loved us so much that he was willing to do that for us. God, we just are so grateful for this beautiful sanctuary where we can come in and just confess to you our um, deepest needs, our deepest regrets, things that um, we hope and pray that you'll guide us through. God, it's just, um, we just lay before you all of our burdens. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, good evening and welcome. If you would, grab your hymnal. We'll be using our hymnals this evening to sing. If you would, turn to hymn number 11. And once you've found that, if you would stand, let's all sing together. All three verses, come thou fount of every blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise his name i'm fixed upon it name of god's redeeming love hitherto thy love has blessed me thou hast brought me to this place and I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me with a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love, here's my Seal it for thy courts above. You may be seated. As you're being seated, I invite you to turn to page 307. On page 307, there is an excerpt from 1 Peter as well as Isaiah that we'll read together. It says worship leader, but we'll all read that together on page 307. If you would, read with me. You were not redeemed 
with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood, as a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. He took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Join me in singing, if you would, Alas and did my Savior bleed, hymn 306. number four. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all I can do. That's not the tune I'm familiar with. I think you could figure that out. We'll continue on, if you would. 1 John 1, 7. And I'll read. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If you would join me on hymn 336, there is a fountain. filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. sins away, wash all my sins away, wash all my sins away, and there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Verse number four. Ever since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die, and shall be till shall be till I die. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. If you would once again, let's stand, let's sing together our last hymn, hymn 305. We'll sing the first, third, and last verses of Jesus Paid It All. Save. 
Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all. And stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat it all together. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. You may be seated. This evening, just to um, consider the question, who are you? <laughs> who are you and, and, and what are we, and who are we really? You take away our possessions and our house and our salary and our net worth. You take away any accolades and degrees and positions, titles, abilities, family background, personality, looks, just, just take it all away. Who are we? What is it that that really makes us tick and, and, and who are we really at the very core of our answer. To really answer that question, it's really more than just looking at our lives, but actually it's going back to the, the very beginning of time. We read in Genesis chapter one, verse one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. You know the story in, in chapter uh, 1 and, and 2 when, when God, just out of his, his wisdom, creates light. He, he creates the land and the sea and the, the atmosphere, the fish and the reptiles, the, the animals. And, and the ultimate creation on that last day, on that sixth day, is the creation of mankind. We, we read this in Genesis chapter 2 and, and verse 9. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So at the very core of who we are, we are dust. <laughs> dust that we we are in dust that we will return. When we think beyond and, and our, our nerves and our flesh and our ligaments and our organs and all that we are, when you, when you narrow it all down, we are, we are dust. We read over in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis that says, For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Not, not a very high calling, isn't it? That somehow we are simply dust. Dust we, be, we, we were before and, and dust that we will return to. But, but the good news and the miracle and the, the knowledge of, of what God has done for us is that the reason why we are not just dust is because of the breath 
of God. It's, it's God's breath upon our lives that brings true life. The only reason we have life is because we have been given that breath. He is the source and the sustainer of life. Any accomplishments that we may have had, any accolades that we may have been given, any title, any position, any our, our personalities, none of these are possible without the breath of God. That's a reminder for us really every day of the year, that reminder that when we wake up in the morning and we we, we feel ourselves breathing and as we, we go through the day that, that we are thankful that it's because of the breath of God upon our lives that we can have any breath at all, that we can move forward, that we can do anything within our lives. Now, there will be a day, of course, if the Lord doesn't come beforehand, that our hearts will stop, that our breath will stop, return back to our original form when man was first created, that we are reduced to dust. That's just reality. It's a sobering reminder. It's also a true reminder of life that Ash Wednesday, a day like this, gives us the opportunity in a very physical way to be mindful of the fact that we are dust and, and ashes except for the life breath of our God. As, as Betty said a moment ago, Ash Wednesday is, is the beginning of what we call Lent. It's a 40-day a uh, observation and reflection and, and meditation of the blessings that God has for us. It's as we begin the, the Easter season, we, we, we look ahead and we know that, that just in a few short weeks that we will uh, commemorate the, the death of our Lord, that we'll gather once again on a, on a Maundy Thursday uh, as we think about that mandate of the Lord to, um, to be, uh, be disciples and to have the time of communion. We will come again at the next day on that Friday in Tenebrae and, and be mindful of the it, the sacrifice of our Lord, something that we have, have observed over and over throughout our lives, and to be able to, to take this Lenten season, 2023, to be able to see it in a fresh and in a new way and see where God is, is leading us. And, of course, the celebration that we do have on Easter Sunday, where we come and we say that Christ the Lord is risen, he is, he is risen indeed. So, it, like a, a lot of holidays, they kind of sneak up on us, and if we're not careful, we'll just kind of continue through the days until we suddenly realize it's Holy Week, and, and, and we have Easter activities, and, and we'll get family together, perhaps, and, and we'll celebrate together. But if we do just that, we miss a real blessing. We miss the blessing of being able to stop and to be mindful to once again to walk that path and to, to, to think about that sacrifice of our Lord, that our God had given himself for us, that we could have life and have life everlasting, of that, that pain upon the cross and not only the, the physical pain, but the reality that he bore the sins of the entire world for all time, including my sin and, and your sin. So it's a time of reflection. It's a time to be mindful that we live in very short lives in the grand scheme of things. And every breath that we take ought to be for the glory of our God. Um, it's a reminder that, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 16, that though our body is renewed, Though our body wastes away, our spirit is renewed. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, we're becoming more and more dusty, perhaps, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We focus on those things that are eternal. And even though we live our lives and we, 
we think we've got our lives pretty much figured out and we know what the week's going to hold, we, we are mindful that, that life is very fragile. But there is that reminder of the joy of the eternal. As we come to Lent, the, the word Lent means to lengthen. And just as spring days are lengthening and they're getting longer, Lent is an opportunity to broaden our faith, to go to a deeper understanding and apply spiritual truths, to apply those truths to our lives. Now, for some, Lent is, what am I going to give up this year? <laughs> um, let me just say that, that if you think about something to give up, don't give up something you shouldn't be doing anyway. <laughs> That's not the true spirit of Lent. <laughs> um, Lent is taking something that is good and something that maybe you enjoy and you decide to go through a 40-day process of, of depriving yourself of that. And, and there are some traditions and some here that will, will have that practice. Whether you have that practice or not, I want to encourage you, maybe not to think of Lent as a time of subtraction, but a time of addition in multiplication. Not only to be able to think about um, perhaps areas to, to reduce, but what areas can we add? What areas can we multiply? What are those things in my life that God is desiring me to to, to put into practice, what are the, those things that I have not been doing that during this time of reflection and introspection that, that God has revealed to me and, and, and to be able to, uh, to prepare for that celebration, to prepare for the reminder of those things that, that perhaps I need to, to reevaluate within my own lives. We need to treat Lent as more than just a um, New Year's resolution that dissolves in just a few days or weeks. Rather, we need to use this time to fully commit to broadening our faith and deepening our knowledge and application of God's truth. To be able to, to say, Lord, guide me through these days, beginning today, to be able to grow deeper into your knowledge. And then to be committed that once the season is complete, and, and we do celebrate on that Easter Sunday, that we don't close the books on that, but that we continue to grow even deeper and, and, and deeper within our faith. To so make every year a, a year that we look back and we put spiritual marks within our lives knowing, I, I, I struggled with this last year, but the Lord has shown me that I can do this. And the Lord has shown me that these are great deep truths that, that I want to, to be able to do in spiritual disciplines and, and, and joyous times to be able to celebrate our Lord. Knowing that our window of our lives stays open for such a brief period of time, uh, let us call even today to come to him, to lean on him who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. As we think about those words, to remember that you are dust, and dust you shall return, but with the breath of God, there is life, and there is life everlasting. Let's bow our heads together. Our Father, we do thank you, Lord, for these truths, and we thank you, Lord, for the reminder as we, we walk this path, Lord, that we know that you are with us. And Father, we, we come to these um, days of preparation, Lord, of, of being able to, to be mindful of your presence within our lives, Lord, to be able to, to celebrate you, Lord, to be able to, um, even in, in a time of mourning, and Lord, even those, um, the age-old practice of, uh, of, of, uh, of the sackcloth and the ashes, Lord, to come with that reminder of our humanity, reminder of our temporary nature, reminder of the remorse, Lord, as we, we come before you. Father, we pray that we can take just these few moments, Lord, to reflect upon our sins, reflect upon the ways in which we have failed you, Lord, and, and how we truly need to turn 
to you. Allow, Lord, allow us to take a moment to reflect upon those. Father, we do thank you, Lord, as we come very humbly, grateful for who you are, and Lord, for what you have done. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we will have the, the giving and the receiving, the imposition of the ashes. Um, invite you to come if you if you so desire. Um, just to kind of keep somewhat orderly, I guess, we'll, we'll come down the center aisle, and if you could then file out to the side and, and be seated once more um, as we take this time to be able to give and receive the ashes.
Join me if you would, hymn 324. We'll sing the first, third, and last verses. When I survey the wondrous cross. Such love. 